Hello guys, Ancient Gameplays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel and for today we have the Adrenaline 23.9.2 Drivers Video Review Drivers Video 23.9.2 Drivers Review and as I say in all my videos 23 is the year 2023 9 is the month September and 2 is the second revision that's a month so the second revision of September now these drivers have lots of new things, new fixes and some things that aren't presented in the release notes, some v well, not very interesting, depends on who's watching, but definitely some interesting things that aren't presented once again on the release notes. And for that I have my tablet and I have my notes as always. And before the release notes, I just want to tell you that uh, we do have some bugs in terms of offline installers and so on, because on the AMD website, the 23.9.2 drivers aren't presented uh, for the 7700 XT and 7800 XT. If you go to the AMD website, it will only show you the 23.9.1 drivers, and those drivers are the previous version, since of course we are at the 23.9.2, drivers that once again only show for all the other cards and not these two. And when you download, for example, a driver for another card and you try to run it on the 7700 XT and 7800 XT it won't run I don't really know why so if you want to do a clean installation here what you have to do is actually um, DDU the, the previous drivers install once again the 23.9.1 without tweaking anything and then going to the software and upgrading to the 23.9.2. If you try to download the 23.9.2 for these cards, once again, for the 7700 XT and 7800 XT, it won't work. But via the software update, it will. Basically, a bug from the AMD website and the, the offline installers. And with this all said, let's go to the release notes and after that, the good and bad things that I found about these drivers. But as for today's sponsor, I can only leave you the good things. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, bringing you all the software deals you need, like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2021 with a new Windows 11 design, and even Windows Server 2022. For all of these, you can use my SKG discount code for 25% off, getting a Windows 10 serial key for only $16. Then use the key on your Windows settings, and you'll have an activated system. So, release notes. We start with new feature highlights with new game supports for Lies of P, Party Animals and the Crew Motorfest. With additional SDK support for Microsoft Agility SDK Preview Release version 1.711.3, including Shader Model 6.8 functionality for Warcrafts, Wave Metric, I believe it's Wave Matrix, and AV1 in code. We also have Microsoft Agility SDK Retail Release 1.610.5, including Enhanced Barriers and Vulcan on the X12 compatibility features. Still on the highlights, we have new AMD Raiden Anti-Lag Plus game support. AMD Software Adrenaline 23.9.2 introduces Anti-Lag Plus support for Starfield, Witcher 3, Elden Ring and Immortals of Avium. Up to 45% decrease in latency across select titles when AMD Raiden Anti-Lag Plus is on using the AMD software Adrenaline 23.9.2 on the Raiden RX 7900 XTX GPU in select titles versus when AMD Raiden Anti-Lag Plus is off. AMD Raiden Anti-Lag Plus features an on-screen overlay that can be used to display the system latency of supported games. When Anti-Lag Plus is enabled, the on-screen overlay can be toggled on using the Alt Plus Shift Plus Hell hotkey. Toggling the hotkey will first enable the status indicator of Anti-Lag Plus, a white triangle, and then display latency in milliseconds or number of frames. To compare the difference in between Anti-Lag Plus and Anti-Lag, hold the Delete key. To compare the difference in between Anti-Lag Plus on and off, hold the Control key, in this case the right Control key. Use Alt Plus Shift Plus half hotkeys to monitor FPS when Anti-Lag and Anti-Lag Plus is enabled in the game. And by the way, if you want to see more about the Anti-Lag Off versus Anti-Lag On versus Anti-Lag Plus On, I released a video yesterday testing the, the Radiant Anti-Lag Plus with this exact feature of the overlay showing actually the, the milliseconds of the input latency while also showing the frame time, the frame time comparison uh, in several scenarios, Witcher 3, Immortals of Avium, Dying Light 2, Starfield, so... Check the video that's passing right now in the screen out and you'll have all the answers that you're seeking regarding, of course, the Anti-Lag Plus. Not questions about your life or the meaning of life. Yeah. 
As for the fixed issues, we have application crash may be observed while playing Baldur's Gate 3 with Vulkan API set on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 7900 XTX. GPU clock may be artificially limited to 2700 MHz when performing manual tuning on the Radeon RX 7700 XT and 7800 XT graphics. Now this is something that I actually experienced before with the 7700 XT and the clocks are indeed better uh, with these new drivers, okay? They would be indeed limited to 2700 MHz and the only workaround that I actually managed to, to find for most games is to set the minimum frequency at 2750 MHz. It will go to 2800 MHz in most games and sometimes even higher, okay? That's the, the, the workaround that I found, but now even with the minimum frequency of 500 megahertz only it will go to 2700 depending on the game 2800 2850 megahertz it depends on the game but it will indeed now go over the 2700 megahertz artificial limit another fixed issue is display may not reach correct brightness with certain games on select samsung FreeSync premium pro monitors or TVs with local dimming setting enabled and this is one of the settings that was also annoying some people and it seems to be fixed gladly Application crash or driver timeout may be observed while playing Smite on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 7900 XTX. And the last fixed issue is intermittent application crash or driver timeout may be observed while playing F1 23 on some AMD graphics products such as the Raiden RX 7800 XT. As for the known issues, we have performance metrics overlay may report NA for FPS on various games, still happening sadly. Audio may intermittently become out of sync with video when recording from AMD Adrenaline software with AV1 codec. The display may intermittently freeze after changing the encoding format while streaming select games using AMD Link. Users experiencing this issue are suggested to select the desired encode format before streaming as a temporary workaround. And we also have an important thing on the important notes, hence being important, which is users pairing an RDNA-based graphics products with either Polaris or Vega-based graphics products are recommended to use the AMD Auto Detect and Install tool. Basically, not only these ones, the, the 7700 XT and the 7800 XT ones as well, because once again, the offline installers aren't working that well. But well, now we know, at least now we know. And with this all said, we go finally to the juicy part of the basically the pros and cons of these drivers and things that I found that once again aren't presented in the release notes and the highlights and so on. Well, as for the good things, let's start with Windows resizing problem. You know that problem where the where the Radeon Adrenaline software was resizing itself automatically and it was damn annoying, really, really damn annoying. And it was happening since the 23.7.2 or 23.7.1 drivers, I don't remember, but it was happening and it was damn annoying. Finally, it is fixed with the 23.9.2 drivers. I tested on my 7700 XT and I tested on this computer with a 6750 XT and it is finally fixed. No more automatic resizing. Thank you. The second one is about the high idle power and although the high idle power is not anymore in the, in the known issues, AMD is still working to fix it and bring the low idle power for more and more users. And for example, with these drivers, I got at least three comments before the video release, three comments telling me that these drivers finally fixed their high idle power. And of course, this won't fix the high idle power for all the users. Of course, it's obvious, but it means that AMD is still working on it and they will most likely make the high idle power less and less relevant as they fix it more and more with, um, with the recent drivers. Once again, more and more users with dual and triple monitor setups are getting the high idle power problem fixed, which is great actually, even though once again it is not in the known issues anymore. Another good thing is that we have now the anti-lag features, we can actually measure the, if you have a 7000 series GPU and you're using anti-lag plus in that game, you can actually measure, measure the system latency, which is pretty nice actually, once again, as you can see in this video passing right now in the screen. Other good thing is that Radeon Boost can now be used with anti-lag even in older cards. With the previous drivers, with the 23.9.1 drivers and below, at least, I, I just tested this like half an hour ago, 
and you couldn't use Radeon Boost with anti-lag enabled, okay? Radeon Boost would uh, indeed deactivate anti-lag, RSR and so on, Radeon Boost would only work alone. And with the 23.9.2 drivers, even in older cards like the RX 6750XT that you see on this computer, AMD is slowly implementing things because as you can see now, Radeon Boost works with anti-lag, something that was not happening before. This may also mean that AMD is actually implementing step-by-step -step the HyperRX on the older cards. That's what I believe, at least. And the final good thing that I found is that we have better performance in Cyberpunk 2077 2.0. We do have these drivers perform better both with the 7700 XT and with the 6750 XT. They perform better in the newest Cyberpunk patch 2.0. But by the way, I'll make a video tomorrow because the game is much better. If the game had released this way, like, like the 2.0 patch, it would be amazing. The game is much, much better now. A, a huge overall, not even mentioning the Phantom Liberty DLC, just mentioning the things that they changed for free in their game, the perks, the abilities, abilities that actually do something now and are worth for something. They redesigned the inventory, uh, they redesigned uh, the skills, they redesigned uh, the way that you um, that you drive your cars, the cars are much more realistic and each one of them have actually now different accelerations, different sounds, also things that weren't presented in the previous versions. The game is much, much better now. But as always, we have also the bad things. And let's start with the first one, which is the shader cache loading is still an issue. For example, in God of War and some DX11 titles, since AMD introduced the DX11 optimizations on the, the RX 5000 series cards, we still have some shader cache is issues in some games, and God of War is one of them. I tested God of War, and although the problems are, are better than with the previous driver, so the, the stutters are not as much, they, they are still there and AMD needs to improve this further. Um, but at least it seems like they're working on it because the shader cache loading issues, they're still there, but much less. Also, I have a VRAM bug, VRAM overclocking bug on my 7700 XT. And I know this is, or I, I am almost certain that, that this is driver related because, and I repeat, because, I tested it several times in several scenarios and I'll give you an example. If I'm overclocking the VRAM two megahertz, it will automatically give me a black screen. And you may say, well, your VRAM is just bad, but that's not the case. And I know this for a fact, because if I run a game in windowed mode, I can overclock the, um, the VRAM up to 2500 megahertz with no issues. The game will work flawlessly. And I found, I actually found today that if I decrease the display to 75 hertz, so if I decrease from 160 to 75 Hertz, I can actually overclock my, my VRAM to 2500 on desktop and I can play games in full screen without any kind of issue. So if I use my screen at 160 Hertz, overclocking the VRAM is a no-go. But if I actually overclock the VRAM while using 75 Hertz, it just works. I, I don't really know, but I'm almost certain it is a bug and I hope it gets fixed in the, um, in the next driver versions. If the artificial lock on 2700 megahertz on the core was a thing, I believe that the VRAM problems can be a thing of the drivers as well. And well guys, that's all for today's video. I gave you the release notes, I gave you the highlights, I gave you the goods and the bads, and now I'm just here to tell you that I'm just here to tell you to hit like, subscribe, share this video if you can, and also leave your comment in the comment section. Let me know if you got things fixed, if you got things worse. And remember, if you're having issues, once again, if you're having issues, uh, test firstly at stock settings, because although your overclocked settings or your undervolting settings might be stable on the previous versions, they might not be stable on the current versions. So. Firstly, test that stock, and if everything is stable, you know that the issue is with your overclocking settings, okay? Just do it firstly, and don't forget to uh, clean install using Display Driver Uninstaller or the, AM or the AMD Cleanup Utility if you're having issues as well, okay? This is just my comments on the topic, and once again, leave your comments in the comment section and let me know if they actually fixed something for you or not, or if they said they fixed something but they didn't. Like, for example, the, the problems with the correct brightness on some on some Samsung uh, FreeSync Pro Premium FreeSync Premium monitors when using local dimming, yes. So just let me know, let us know as a community. Thank you very much once again and see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.
the resistance. Report to your nearest intake facility immediately. We promise nothing nefarious will befall you. We promise. Report to the VIP section of your nearest intake facility for compulsory behavioral modification. It will be fun. 